Welcome. As a potter, it's a constant journey to try and find designs that you like to make, that sort of fit your personal style, and that sells well. Over the years, uh, I've made a lot of these uh, bamboo vases, and apparently my clients love them because they're all sold out. This is the only lift <laughs> I have in, um, in my home. Um, and I found that I really like to make these ones. And um, not only are they fun to throw, they're really fast to throw. They don't take up too much clay and they fit very well in the kiln. And they work so well the, with the glazes I like to work with. They, they, uh, because of this, uh, this sort of bamboo texture, whatever you would call it, they break really well, the, the glazes I have. So it's fun to play with. And because of all that combination, uh, it's nice to make, it's fun to make, I can play with all the glazes I like the most, and they're cheap to fire, and they sell well. You know, that combination is just, to me, one of the perfect pots. I didn't invent this, you know. Lots of other potters are doing these bamboo type of vases. I can't even remember where I got it from. It's the same thing if you do a mug or a cup or other kind of vase or a pitcher or a teapot. It's all been invented before. It's not completely original. But what you can do is you can add some original flavor to it. Maybe you would add a spouse and a handle, make it a pitcher, or you could make it wider, bigger, change the textures, of course, change the glazes to your personal preference. So um, this is not so much about uh, inventing something completely new, but it's more about developing your pottery into something that is um, fun to make, fit your style, it's not too expensive to make, to make it profitable when you sell it. That is, of course, if you're selling your pottery. So today we're going to focus on how I make these um, uh, bamboo vases and um, maybe that will inspire you to try and make your own variation of it. So, welcome! I'm gonna throw this one in um, what is currently my favorite clay, this high iron uh, stoneware. It's about one and a half kilo or something. I wanna throw it as thin as I can and as straight as I can as a cylinder, and then we will move on to um, creating this uh, bamboo shape. I'm going to make a relatively thin button because I don't expect to um, to trim a foot on this. Uh, it serves very little purpose, and uh, so I'm just going to make it thin. And of course, compress the button well.
So now we have the basic cylinder and I'm not a very good thrower. I think it's really difficult to make it very, very thin, um, but it's okay for this. We will do some trimming uh, later on tomorrow. The size of it is uh, good. It's a little bigger than the other one I made here. It's wider and it's taller. Uh, I think it needs, is it going out a little bit in the top? So I want to squeeze that in just a little bit. I want to make sure that it is as uh, straight as possible. And I'm scraping the surface. Um, I don't really want too much uh, slip on it for the next uh, stage. So I think that's good. I'm also gonna clean the inside now, of course. My beautiful <laughs> brush on a stick just fell apart. I think it works okay. It's not that much water in here, but I don't wanna leave anything there. I just wanna make sure that it's nice and clean. The sides too. So now we have the basic shape of the, uh, of the cylinder, the way that I wanted it, intended it more or less. So now we have to work on the, um, on the bamboo shape. And I'm going to do the initial shaping um, now when it's wet. And then I'm going to leave it until tomorrow and then we'll do some more. So basically I take a rim like this, medium stiff. Uh, it's actually quite stiff. Um, you could also be using a, uh, this flexible one. And I think, I think actually I'm going to use that. Um, you know, the Mod Tools one have color uh, labels, so the blue I think is the most stiff, and the green is like medium, and the red is super soft. Um, so I'm going to put it like in the middle of where I want uh, this groove. So I'm going to push it in. And I'm going to do the next one. I'm going to hold on to the top because I don't want that to flare out. And the next one. And when you get to the top here, watch out because uh, it's very easy to, um, to push it out of shape. Um, And then I'm just going to revisit each of the grooves uh, to make sure that they sort of fit what I intended. They may not look perfect now, um, and they're not, <laughs> but um, I promise you once we get um, the final um, a trimming done, they will be good. So I'm just going to make sure that the top didn't flare out too much. I don't want that. So something like this. I've, I could of course also have made just a really thick uh, vase and then cut out everything, but it's a less efficient use of my clay. So I start out by doing this because then it's going to be shaped um, so it's sort of like e equal uh, size uh, walls um, and then um, I'm gonna waste less clay when we do the trimming. As I said I'm not a very good thrower. I, I, I don't throw as thin as I would like to and that lots of other potters can do but I'm a very good trimmer. <laughs> it does waste a little more clay but well, I reclaim so um, it works out. So that's the first stage of the bamboo vase. I'm going to let it dry until it's soft, leather hard, and then we'll do some trimming. So now it has dried uh, overnight. It is on 
little bit of a of a dry side. It dries quicker here in the winter for some reason. It's not very warm, but humidity is low, I guess. Anyway, I think it's good enough to uh, trim. And as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm not a very good thin thrower. And especially with this clay that has so much squawk, it's difficult to make it as thin as I would like it. It's not bad. It's probably like, I don't know, four millimeters or something. But I still want to make it a little thinner. And I want to accentuate. <laughs> I want to make these um, uh, bamboo shapes a little more distinct. So um, to do that, we're going to do some uh, trimming. I'm using a round uh, tool uh, for, for this, very uh, thin and very sharp, and it's very good for this sort of trimming. So see, now it becomes much more distinct, and I like that. Also, I would like the, 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 the peaks to be a little sharp, so I just do one first, and then I do the next. And if you wonder why it's wobbling a little bit now, I don't know. It sometimes happens when they dry, but of course it's it's very little. You, you don't see it when it's when it's not um, turning. So um, and you can still you know like feel inside and see. Well, still have a little bit to go. So no worries. I usually start out by doing like the basic uh, trimming, so I get each of the grooves and each of the, 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 the spikes to be um, sort of like what I, what I want. And then um, once that is done, I can go into more details if needed. See this is a little bit too high, I think, I can take some of that. This is on the dry side. <laughs> but now it's beginning to look better. I don't mind, it, it doesn't have to be like completely perfect, like a machine made. Um, I like it to be, uh, let me just take a small one here. I like it to be still, you know, organic, um, sort of mimic. Um, what is it to be major? It is a little bit on the dry side, but uh, I think I can still. So. If your tools are sharp enough, you can actually still do some trimming, even though it's uh, it's on the on the dry side. You have to be a little more careful because you can chip off. Um, so, some designers like to add um, a little bit of a mark at the at the peak of these. I don't usually do, but I can I can sort of show you what it would be like on the lower one. Here. I think. Somehow helps mimic the, the natural feel of it. I'm just going to remove it again here because I don't really like it. Um, so I think the basic shape now looks good. Last thing I want to do is I want to use a very flexible rib. I like these red ones from the butt tools. Very, very flexible. But it's nice to just smooth out um, the surface. also want to because as I mentioned I'm not going to trim a foot on this one so I just want to uh, undercut it a little bit here it really serves two purposes um, one is of course to um, 
to make sure that it looks nice down here. But also by undercutting just a little bit, it can just be a couple of millimeters. I will let the glaze go down to here, but not in the undercut. And that will uh, make sure that on one hand, it looks like the whole pot is glazed when you look at it, but it will make sure that it doesn't glue to my, um, my shelves. So now, I think it looks okay. Have a nice organic form and uh, with glaze that's gonna break over the edges if you're using a glaze that does that, it will end up looking really nice. Now I just need to cut it loose. And as you can see, it was a little bit on the dry side. There's a little bit of uh, clay here, so I wanna, I wanna make sure that's uh, removed. Let's take this one. Um, to make sure that we have a flat button. You could of course trim a foot if you like to, but I don't think it's needed for this one. And besides, having a very tall, slim waist like this, standing upside down can be a little bit tricky. And there's no need for it, I think, for, for, for this design. I just want to make sure that it's completely flat. I'm just going to use my, my thumb all around to smoothen out the edge. And now you can see this small view that I made here. It's only like a couple of millimeters, but it does, it does make sure that the glaze doesn't stick to my shelves. And, uh, it looks good. It kind of raises it up a little bit. So the only thing left now is I want to add. I want to add. Let me just see here. Uh, I want to add my Megas mark, and I think I mentioned this a few times before, but uh, I had these made in um, Ukraine. Uh, very nice quality. You can see they're very high raised, and they can do very, um, very. Uh, very, very tight, um, uh, small, <laughs> tight lines, and uh, they're made in stainless steel, so they last probably last my lifetime. And they were not, actually not so expensive to make, so I'm just going to add that to the bottom here. That's it. So that's it. Now it's ready to dry. And uh, when I glaze it, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna use a glaze that, that breaks really nice over these edges, that will kind of highlight the, the, the shape and texture of it. So that's it, it's done. It was a fast, short little video, this one. They are really fast to make, and I like to make them, they're fun to make, and uh, my customer seems to like them. I sold every item I did so far. Uh, so it might be a good, uh, Good design to have in your arsenal of designs. <laughs> so this was a just, just a short video. It's not that complicated to make them, and uh, and I uh, hope you will and, uh, hope you did enjoy this uh, video. And if you did, please subscribe, uh, share, comment, whatever you like, and come back again and see a new video. Uh, I have now a, a more fixed schedule, so every Sunday I'll put out a new video. But uh, you'll get notified if you are a subscriber. So. I just hope to see you soon again. Have a great day.